What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be showing how you can remove some objects from your live action video footage. There are several different ways you can do this, but this technique that I'll be going through in this video is probably the simplest and is super useful when you're trying to remove some background objects in your scene or even some 3D tracking markers that you put down in the foreground of your shot. I'll be doing some 3D tracking, some camera projection, some texture painting, and finally some very basic compositing inside of Blender to bring the shot together. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. As usual, we will just delete everything in our scene here. And now I will go to our Render Properties tab here and we'll switch to the Cycles Rendering Engine. And the first thing we're going to do is import our footage and uh, start tracking it. So I'll just go to the Plus tab here and we'll go to uh, Visual Effects and then Motion Tracking. And then I'll just go to Open here and find our footage that we're going to uh, edit here. And this is our footage here. It's an mp4 file, but as I mentioned in previous videos, you can use an image sequence if you're more comfortable with that. And I'll go ahead and click on open. And uh, this is our footage here. Before we track it, I'm going to go ahead and set the scene frames for our uh, Blender timeline to the length of this footage. And then I'll click on prefetch so that Blender automatically loads all of our frames into our project. All right, so now that we have our footage in our scene here, let's go ahead and add some tracking markers and track our shot. So I'll go over here to our tracking settings. I wanna switch this to blurry footage. And I have a tutorial on how you can do a little bit more tricky shots um, on this channel as well. I'll put a link to that in the description. However, for this specific shot, the shot is pretty simple here as you can see just a very simple uh, side to side movement for our camera so I think we can get away with just using the detect features option and then cleaning up our track afterwards so this is the feature we're going to use so I'll go to the beginning of our timeline here and I'll click on detect features and as you can see here only three features are selected and to increase the amount of features that are selected we can just bring down the threshold here so I'll bring it all the way down to zero and now as you can see here we have lots of different um, markers selected and now we'll go down here to uh, track forward and click to track these markers forward. And now that we're at the end of our timeline here, I'll click on detect features again and we'll track these features backward. And this should be enough tracking markers to track our shot and uh, solve our camera. You want to make sure that you have at least eight tracking markers across your entire scene. And we do have uh, quite a bit more than eight here. So this should be pretty good. Now I'll go to our solve panel here and I want to uh, click on the keyframe option here. And now it's going to automatically uh, select the keyframes for solving our camera. And I also want to refine the focal length, the optical center, and the radial distortion as well. And now I'll just click on solve camera motion and Blender will solve our camera. And as you can see here, we have a solve error of 1.69 pixels, which is pretty solid. However, I want to try to get it below one pixel for this shot. So what I'm going to do is first just kind of uh, zoom into our graph here. We can search for any points that are spiking uh, away from our main graph here. That's one way to find points that are sliding off of uh, their tracking markers. However, we can also just kind of scroll through here and look at our shot by eye. And as you can see here, we have a few different points here. For example, these ones near the horizon that are slipping off of their uh, markers so we'll go ahead and just manually delete a few of these points here uh, and just kind of find any of those points that are slipping off of their markers another thing we can do to clean up our tracks is we can go to our cleanup tab here and click on clean tracks and then we can increase the reprojection error and only select points in the scene that are above uh, you know a certain error or more so let's say we want to select the tracking points that have an error of 2.8 or above we just make this 2.8 here and uh, blender has automatically selected those for us and we can press x and delete them and uh, now if we select all of our tracking points again and click on solve camera motion now as you can see we have a solve error of 0.91 pixels which should be pretty good for the shot but feel free to get this number as low as you like so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a camera in our top right here so i'll go ahead and press shift a and add a camera to our scene here and we'll view from the viewpoint of the camera and if we want to select a point here for the origin of our scene so i'll just select one of the points in the middle of our scene and uh, make sure that it's uh, somewhere in between keyframe a and keyframe b here and then i will just click on set origin and now as you can see our camera is repositioned so that this tracking marker helps uh, define where our camera position is and i also want to define a floor for the scene so i'll select three different tracking points in our scene that are kind of like a floor for our uh, live action shot and then i'll click on floor 
And uh, now as you can see here, our camera is positioned a little bit better for our live action shot. And of course you can keep adjusting this um, once you've used these orientation settings, but it just helps a little bit to uh, kind of define where your camera is right off the bat. All right, so now that we've uh, set up the orientation a bit, let's go ahead and click on uh, set as background which will, as you can see here, set our footage as our background. And then we'll also click on set up tracking scene, which is going to add a very basic ground plane as a shadow catcher, as well as a foreground collection. We don't really need these for this tutorial. However, it does automatically set up some compositing nodes for us that tend to be helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. All right, so now that we have 3D tracked our shot, we'll go back to layout mode here, and I'll just go to view and viewpoint camera. And as you can see here, our camera is tracked fairly decently here. And we can actually select our camera and then uh, show our motion tracking data. And this is just helpful so that we can know where to create the clean plate for the object that we want to hide. So for this specific shot, we're going to be removing these cows in the background here. And what we're going to do to do this is uh, use a screenshot from our footage and reproject that screen screenshot on top of some geometry in our scene and then paint out the cows in the reprojection of that screenshot. So first I'll go ahead and just delete our cube here as well as our background ground plane and I will delete our light here as well and then also our background collection here I'll delete that and our foreground layer and now we'll just press shift a we'll add our own uh, plane here and I'm just going to position this plane where our cow would be in our shot and as you can see here we actually have a tracking marker that is right by the cows in the shot here that we're going to remove so this tracking marker will be helpful in placing the geometry for our clean plate so what we can do here is uh, select this tracking marker where our cow would be it's just this one right here and then I'll just move our plane here that we've added all the way to our tracking marker and then just kind of position it where we would want in the scene and this is going to be helpful because as our camera moves we want our clean plate that will be hiding the cows from the shot to also move in accordance to the way the live action camera was moving all right so I'll just kind of position this by our tracking marker here and depending on your shot you may need to be much more accurate than I'm doing right now but uh, if things are off in the distance you can get away with just kind of eyeballing it here and then I'll just go to edit mode here I'll go to edge and subdivide our uh, plane here a few times. I'll just subdivide it maybe eight times. And then I'll duplicate this plane and I'll put it over here where these cows are. And one thing that's nice to do is just try to match the general geometry of our scene. So since the hills are kind of sloping upward here, it's kind of nice to match that with our planes here that we've added. If you want to recreate the geometry even more, you can go into proportional editing mode here and kind of, you know, drag some things around to try to match the geometry of the scene a bit better. But I think this should be pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'll select all of our vertices here. We'll go to our materials tab and add a new material and we'll make these planes an emission material. And for color, we want to add an image texture. So we'll select here. And now we want to import a screenshot of our footage here. So if you don't have a screenshot of your live action footage, just go ahead and take one and uh, save it. So I'll go ahead and open it here. I'll go to desktop and I have a screenshot here and I'll open it. And all I've imported into the scene is just this very basic screenshot image here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure we're at the very beginning of our timeline where we have taken our screenshot from our footage and I'm going to press U and project from view. And uh, now as you can see here, if I go to rendered view, we actually have our image projected onto the geometry of our planes here. All right, so now that we have projected our screenshot onto our geometry, let's adjust our image texture so that they no longer show the cows here. So I'll go back to solid mode here really quick. And what I wanna do is while our planes here are selected, I'll just go to texture paint mode here and now what we'll do is we'll just go here to clone and if I just hold down command I can select my 3d cursor what portion of the plane that I want to clone from and then I can just paint over these cows here and remove them from the shot then I'll go here to this uh, part of the image here I'll press command and click and now I'll paint over these cows as well and before we go back to object mode, we want to save our image file here. So I'll go up here to texture slot and then I'll click on save all images. And now our screenshot has been saved with our clone stamps overlaid on top of our cows. So when we render it, the cows will no longer be there. All right, so now that we have painted out our cows, we'll go back to object mode really quick. And as you can see here, if I play through our shot, 
our planes are moving along with the cows in the background here which is exactly what we want and we could probably render it out just like this and get a pretty decent result however i want a little bit of control to clean it up a bit in the compositor so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a mask around our cows here and uh, create a little bit of a feathering effect on it so i'll just go to the plus checkbox here and i'll go to visual effects and masking and we'll just open up our footage here and i'll go ahead and create a new mask and i'll press command click and i'll just create a little basic mask around our cows here i'll select all of our points then i'll click on scale feather and i'll just scale up our feather a bit here so that our uh, plates will blend into our shot a bit and we're actually going to use this masking data in our compositor and before we create a mask around this cow as well i want to actually track this mask to our point here so that it stays with our cows so i'll select our mask first and then i'll hold down shift and select our point and then i'll press Control p and now as you can see here if i scroll through our timeline our mask actually stays with our cows here which is what we want and now i'll go to this singular cow here i'll add a new mask with this button right here and i'll press command click and i'll just kind of surround our cow here and then once again i'll select all of our points here i'll scale the feather a bit you know drag some of these points up so we can use this mask to kind of feather in our clean plate on top of our cows so i also will relabel our masks here i'll call this one cows left mask and we'll call this one cows right mask all right so now i'll go back to layout mode here and let's change our render settings for output i'll go to our world properties here and uh, deselect ambient occlusion since we've used an emission material for our camera projected clean plate we don't really need to add an hdri or anything to our background so i'll just leave this as is however we do need to go to our render property settings here and under film we need to select the transparent options so that we can export our data with an alpha channel and i'll change our render samples to 32 and for advanced i'll select our seed stopwatch for some noise variation and this should be pretty good under output i will switch our file output to openexr and we'll render at 1920 by 1080p resolution at 100 percent and here we will choose our output for our final uh, composite so i'll just create a folder here call it object removal composite and accept and let's go ahead and go to rendered view here and see what we're getting so far and as you can see here it's uh, pretty noticeable right now but that's just because there's a little bit of opacity with our background element here but if we render it out it should be just fine all right so now we're going to do a test render and clean up our shot with our masks data in the compositor and before we do this i do want to uh, get rid of our background view layer here since we don't need it so i'll select our background view layer and just exit and now we just have our foreground view layer which is all we need and now i'll just go to render and render image and let's see what we get and as you can see here we have a pretty nice shot here without our cows however you can kind of see the seams where our uh, projection has been created so we're going to use that mask data that we created to kind of clean this up a bit so we'll go ahead and close this here and we'll go to the compositing tab and i'm going to delete this alpha overnode here since this has been automatically created for us for a shadow catcher and we're not going to need that and we'll bring this alpha over output to our composite and viewer node and we also don't need this render layer right here all right so what's happening right now in the compositing setup here is we have our main movie clip going into an alpha over node and our clean plate is being overlaid on top of our footage and uh, it's looking okay however it's not totally clean here you can kind of see the seams where the uh, you know clean plate is being added so to solve that we're going to use our feathered mask to blend everything together so i'll press shift a i'll add an input mask and we'll select our left mask for the cows first then i'll press shift a again and we'll go to converter and then set alpha and we'll drag this right before our alpha over node and now i'll take our cows left mask and connect it to our alpha and as you can see here now only the cows that are being masked by our left mask are being hidden but the clean plate for them is much better now that it has been feathered into the scene with our mask so now we want to do the same thing for this right cow here so what i'll do is i'll just make some space here i will uh, duplicate our alpha over node at this um right before our viewer and composite node there then i will duplicate our set alpha and cow's left mask here and uh, put them right here and i'll take this set alpha into this alpha over image input and i'll take our clean plate render layer here and connect this to our second set alpha node as well and now we need to go to our mask layer here and switch this to our right mask 
And at this point, we have effectively removed our cows from the live action shot. All we have to do is just go to render and render animation. And now Blender is going to go through all of the frames and export your final composite here to the output folder and file that you have selected. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let me know what kind of videos or tutorials you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time.